The first thing I want to uh, point to and I'll tell you is first you need to know your periodontal probe, meaning in you want to know what kind of probe you are using. Usually what we ask you in the UNC-15. So the UNC-15, as you can see, is a probe that has one millimeter markings. So the first line is one and then two and then three. But then the bottom of the black band is four millimeters and the top is five. So if the entire black band, the first black band disappears, then that's a five millimeter pocket and so on. So then it continues six, seven, eight, and then nine and 10 is the second black band. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, that's the last black band, 14 and 15. The first thing I want you to pay attention to is that when we are probing, we're not placing the probe parallel to the long axis of the tooth. That's not what we want to do, especially if you're doing it on the proximal. So you don't hold the probe parallel to the long axis of the tooth. So typically what you want to do, you want to have the first two millimeter of the probe flat on the surface you're probing, which means to achieve that here, you have to tilt your probe a little bit like this. Okay, so this is the proper angulation in the, especially in the interproximal area. So you go, you keep the first two millimeter of the probe flat on the surface you're probing and you slide the probe on the surface you're probing. Which means also that when you want to switch from probing the distal of this central to the mesial of this lateral incisor, your probe is supposed to do this movement. So you go out and you tilt and now you go into the uh, sulcus on the mesial of the lateral incisor. I don't want to see you just maintaining the same kind of angulation and probing everywhere. Okay, that's not a good technique. Going back to probing, let's say on the centrals. So the first thing you want to keep the first two millimeter, if I'm probing the right central incisor, on the mesial, so I don't hold it straight like this, I tilt it, okay? So the first two millimeter of the probe are making contact with the tooth, let's say, or flat on the surface, I'm probing. So you go like this, and then when you're switching to the adjacent central, you switch your angulation. So you're like this, and then you go like this. The second thing is that usually what you want to do so that you don't probe the line angle. See right here, I'm probing the line angle of the tooth. I'm not really uh, probing the interproximal area, which is what I really want to do. So in, in order to properly probe in the interproximal area, what you need to do is you need to tilt your probe. So you maintain this angulation, let's say, but you need to tilt your probe. So you tilt the tip kind of inward and then you slide on the tooth. And let me show you why this is important. Probably it's easier to demonstrate on the posterior area. So what you're trying to do, you're trying to probe the interproximal area. If you probe right here, you're probing the line angle. And that's not what I want to do. So in order to probe under the contact right here what I need to do is to kind of tilt my probe so that's about 20 degrees I would say 20 to 30 degrees I need to tilt my probe and now I go under the contact you see now I'm going to the premolar to the distal of the second premolar what I do I tilt my probe and I slide. So what you need to think of is imagine you want to introduce your probe right here, right over the contact area. But you can't do that. So what can you do? You slide and then you tilt your probe inward so that you can go and probe under the contact. How we uh, quickly do it. We start, let's say, on the distal of the uh, incisor. See, I'm not doing this because in that case I would be probing the line angle, right? So I'm kind of taking it further interproximal, tilting the tip of the probe 
towards the interproximal, kind of under the contact. So I go like this, this, and pay attention how I change the angulation of the probe with each position. The last thing you need to pay attention to is the amount of force you're using when you're probing. The amount of force we usually estimated at 20 to 25 grams. There are a lot of you know analogies you can make. تشبيهات عشان إنك أنت تقدر تقدر تقريبا الفورس اللي مفروض تستعملها. But a nice technique is to use your fingernail, and the moment you see blanching under the probe. That's about the amount of force or pressure you want to use. I want to just go over what you're supposed to see, what kind of movement of the probe you're supposed to see when you're probing on the lingual of the posterior mandibular area. So if you're probing the mesial of the uh, lower seven, so you're supposed to go like this, now, when you want to probe the distal, you cannot maintain the same angulation and go into the sulcus on the distal of the molar. That way you would be poking into the gingiva. So what you need to do is, like we said, tilt so that your first two millimeter of the probe are flat on the distal surface of the first molar, and then you slide and probe. And then you go back to the mesial, and then now, once you want to go to the distal of the second premolar, you go out, you tilt, and then you probe again. So what I want to show you next is the examination of the mobility. So you apply one instrument, and then you push with the other one, all right? Sometimes what I see students doing is basically they trap the tooth between the, the two handles of the instrument and they start shaking. So really what they're doing, they're shaking the patient's head. That's not the most accurate way of doing it. So what you could do this also, kind of. What I prefer is for you to apply and hold one handle and then kind of push with the other. Next is examination of fremenis. First, you need to communicate to the patient what you want him to do. So first, you talk to the patient, you explain to him, I need you to bite down on your back teeth. Adatan Mardana is a tehki odd asnanak, ktir ahyan, mafum asnan anna, manal asnan amamiye. For he starts biting on the front teeth. So interdict what the hell and I'm to do is to do this. He goes into maximum intercuspation. Now the patient, you need to demonstrate that he needs to tap his teeth. While he's doing that, is you use your finger, so you apply it on one tooth or maybe two teeth. That's the best way to do it when you're a beginner. Next, I want to show you the detection uh, of subgingival calculus. For the detection of subgingival calculus, what I prefer to use is the Shepard Explorer. And you can use the periodontal probe. You can use a periodontal explorer. My preference is for you to use the Shepard Explorer. The first is to hold it parallel. You can tilt slightly. Either way, mesial or distal. But I don't want you to hold it horizontal, especially with the tip pointing into the sulcus. So you have to be parallel to the long axis of the tooth. In that direction on the upper teeth, and this direction on the lower teeth. Next, what you need to do is to apply the instrument with the side of the tip, not with the tip perpendicular on the tooth surface, and not entirely flat on the tooth surface, but kind of tangential. So the side of the tip. And the last thing you need to do is the movement of the instrument. 
you need to go apical coronal. So if I'm detecting calculus on the mid buckle of the central incisor, I go apical coronal. As you can see, as I move apical, I'm pressing against the gingival margin. That's why you can slightly tilt your instrument so that you engage the sulcus without putting excessive pressure on the gingival margin. This is on the buckle. As you move towards detection on the proximal surface, you need to rotate your instrument so that you maintain contact between the side of the tip and the tooth surface. So if you don't rotate properly, what's going to happen is that your tip will start poking in the gingiva on the side. So you need to rotate your instrument, maintain the contact between the side of the tip and the tooth surface, and you go apical coronal. The detection is really happening during the movement of the instrument towards the apical. On the lingual of the posteriors, just as an example, you still apply the same principles. You hold the instrument parallel or almost parallel to the long axis of the tooth. So don't hold it horizontal. Don't hold it with the tip pointing towards the sulcus. Apply the side of the tip and then move apical coronal. So now I'm going to talk to you about the examination of the furcation. We're going to use the upper molar as an example. So the first thing I want you to do is to apply the neighbor's probe as if you're performing just regular probing, meaning you don't hold the probe horizontally like this. So what you do, just as if you're probing, you go with the probe. As you're doing that, what you're doing is you're doing like a multiple probings in this area moving kind of in the mid buckle area and you're trying to find the entrance of the frication as you find the entrance of the frication you rotate your probe as if you're rotating it into the central fossa now what i'm going to show you is i have an extracted tooth here so these are the the buckle roots right here and what you're going to do like I said you start probing and you start looking for the entrance of the frication so you go now you're rotating to go into the frication you're rotating in this direction towards the central fossa of the tooth and your probe goes into the frication area For the mesial frication, it's from the palatal aspect. And what that means, مش إنه إحنا, we go on the mid-palatal aspect of the tooth right here. That's wrong. There's no frication here. This is the palatal root. The frication is right here on the mesial. So kind of under the cusp of carabelli, right here. Because the mesiobuccal root is wider, the entrance to frication is kind of pushed towards the palatal side. And it's positioned kind of along the mesial aspect of the cusp of Carabelli, right here. So the way you examine this, you apply your probe right here. And like I said, you hold it flat. You don't go like this. You don't start horizontally, holding the probe horizontally. You start as if you're probing just using a regular probe and you probe around in this area and you're trying to rotate your probe to go into the central fossa so if you have an opening your probe would rotate and go into the frication that's how you do it on the distal aspect you can come either from the buckle or you can come from the palatal aspect like this so rotating into the frication 